So this is pretty cool. This is a, uh, as you can see from the notes here, a VHF, excuse me, UHF uh, R3 receiver. Uh, it's hooked up to some test equipment right now. Um, quite a bit of conversion happened here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Changed all the parts out for R2. Uh, a couple under there, a bunch up here. And big thing, I got this figured out. The VCO, that's the hard part. Moved an R3 down to R2. And according to my details here, uh, let's see. I hate doing this, but uh, it locks from uh, test channel 425.95 all the way up to uh, 482.425. And the important thing, look at here, uh, for example, here's uh, 446 before uh, on that same channel in the middle, which would have been 476. It's middle frequency. It was neg 119.4 for 12 dB cyanide. Right now, uh, same channel, um, middle of the VCO, it's negative 119.2. Uh, steering voltages track very well. Uh, actually, has a little bit more range than it did before. Uh, for some reason, you wanted to use it out of band. I don't know why you would do that, though, because it's already an R3. Um, so, yeah, so i got to pack this up, but keep in mind, these are all barefoot numbers. Uh, so there's no pre-selector. Uh, when Motorola quotes the spectrum or the receive sensitivity, it's gonna have a pre-selector in front of it. So it's gonna be about a dB worse. Um, anyways, I got it set up here, it's locked. Sorry, I gotta do that. But you can see we're about negative 12 dB. It, it bounces back and forth. Uh, because of that, but that's on 446 megahertz, you know, essentially right in the middle of the ham band, and it's meeting spec at negative 119. So, I don't think I could ask for anything better than that. And obviously, if you want it better, use a, uh, there it is, use a uh, preamplifier or something. But uh, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna work on the docks on this, but essentially anything in blue here uh, needs to be changed out. Uh, ID bits over here, uh, these two. Um, you can see they're in red there. They just need to be swapped basically, because uh, it's one is 3300 in R2, the other one is zero in R2, and in uh, R4 or R3, it's swapped, so. Anyways, uh, got to clean the board up, but uh, I'm going to say that R3 to R2 works. So all that T-band stuff that's out there can now be converted. I'm still interested to see an R4. I've never seen an R4 in person, so uh, it might be possible to convert it. I don't know, but the R3s now work. Anyways, thanks for uh, watching this short video. Um, check out my wiki. Uh, if uh, once I get this documented, probably I'm going to aim to do it sometime in the next week. And uh, we now have UHF R3 receivers working. I'm pretty confident that the uh, transmitter, and I don't have an R3 exciter, um, but I'm pretty confident that it's basically just going to be a few changes in here. Oh. That's breaking squelch there. So. Yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty confident it'll be a few changes in here, and uh, it'll uh, it'll probably work. There's a lot more stuff to change in the uh, receiver. So, anyways, that's my update. This is uh, Brian, uh, uh, amateur radio call sign W9CR. Check out my uh, my wiki for some more info once I get it up there. Thanks, guys and girls and people, whoever, whatever. I don't discriminate. Furries, maybe. 